Bacchus and Ariadne, painted by Titian from 1520 to 1523. Setting the scene, Ariadne has been left on the island of Naxos, deserted by her lover Theseus, whose ship sails away to the far left. She is discovered on the shore by the god Bacchus, leading a procession of revelers in a chariot drawn by two cheetahs. Bacchus is depicted in mid-air as he leaps out of the chariot to protect Ariadne from these beasts. In the sky above the figure of Ariadne is a crown of stars, the constellation Corona Borealis, that Bacchus promises for his new lover. From On the Productions of Modern Art by Charles Lamb Can we produce any one painter within the last fifty years, or since the humour of exhibiting began, that has treated a story imaginatively? By this we mean upon whom his subject has so acted that it has seemed to direct him, not to be arranged by him. Any upon whom its leading or collateral points have impressed themselves so tyrannically that he dared not treat it otherwise lest he should falsify a revelation. Any that has imparted to his compositions not merely so much truth as is enough to convey a story with clearness, but that individualizing property which should keep the subject so treated distinct in feature from every other subject, however similar, and to common apprehensions almost identical. So as that we might say this and this part could have found an appropriate place in no other picture in the world but this. Is there anything in modern art we will not demand that it should be equal, but in any way analogous to what Titian has effected? In what wonderful bringing together of two times in the Bacchus and Ariadne in the National Gallery? Precipitous with his reeling satyr rout about him, re-peopling and re-illumining suddenly the waste places, drunk with a new fury beyond the grape. Bacchus, born in fire, fire-like flings himself at the Cretan. This is the time present. With this telling of the story, an artist, and no ordinary one, might remain richly proud. Guido, in his harmonious version of it, saw no further. But from the depths of the imaginary spirit, Titian has recalled past time and laid it contributory with the present to one simultaneous effect. With the desert all ringing with the mad symbols of his followers, made lucid with the presence and new offers of a god, and as if unconscious of Bacchus, or but idly casting her eyes as upon some unconcerning pageant, her soul undistracted from Theseus, Ariadne is still pacing the solitary shore in as much heart silence and in almost the same local solitude with which she awoke at daybreak to catch the forlorn last glances of the sail that bore away the Athenian. Here are two points miraculously co-uniting. Fierce society with the feeling of solitude still absolute, noonday revelations with the accidents of the dull grey dawn unquenched and lingering, the present Bacchus with the past Ariadne, two stories with double time, separate and harmonizing, had the artist made the woman one shade less indifferent to the god, still more, had she expressed a rapture at his advent, where would have been the story of the mighty desolation of the heart previous? Merged in the insipid accident of the flattering offer, met with a welcome acceptance, the broken heart for Theseus was not lightly to be pieced up by a god. <laughs>